All right, I'm gonna start sharing my screen here. All right, um, so you all should be seeing um, the Sonatype GitHub organization over here. And as you see, there's more than 1300 repos that we have over here, right? And not all of them are uh, public. I filtered it right now to show us just the public repos that we have, um, which essentially means anyone on GitHub can view these um, and the code that's in it and whatever else is in this, right? So we have 237. So like Sal said, we are gonna create a public repo. And right here, it says new, I'm gonna go over here. Um, not gonna select any template. I'm gonna just create it from scratch. We'll call it women at sonotype. The description, I think I have it somewhere. Um, You can give a small description here, it's optional. So this is where you get to select if you want it to be public or private. Essentially, if you make it private, you're the only one who's gonna see uh, the repo and what's in it. Public is going to make anyone on GitHub uh, be able to see that. So we're gonna make this one public. Um, I'm going to add a readme. Um, that's essentially usually in the context of a project, a readme explains what the project is about. Uh, it gives the basic guidelines on how you can contribute the code of conduct, um, how to submit um, feature requests or contribute to it, essentially all of that. So I'll add a readme here. Um, this is where you pick a license and there's this whole list of licenses, right? Um, and I'm going to go with the Apache license, all is that correct? That's the one we're going to use. Yeah. Okay. So from the historical nature of our association with Apache Software Foundation, we use Apache license. A lot of these have really minor differences, but just keep that in mind. It's it's yeah, it was good for us to know that that was a learning lesson for me. Yeah. So. And this is the final step you create, click create. And here we have our own repo on GitHub, right? And it's as simple as that. So now, as you can see, we have this license file. There's a readme file that I that I had opted to create. What I'm going to go and do um, is edit this readme. And it's essentially like a wiki. So any, any of these pages, you can add as many of them. It's like editing a wiki. What they use is called Markdown. Um, so, you may or may not be familiar with it, but we'll go over some of that. So I'm just gonna click this little pencil icon here. And so if you see over here, this hashtag essentially denotes that this is a title and you can go down as many um, levels and levels deep in it. So they could be from one to six hashtags and there's gonna be like a title, a heading, a subheading, a sub subheading. And essentially that is what is, this is doing, right? And anytime you make any changes here, you can go to this preview tab and you'll see what how it looks. So I'm just gonna call this, because this is my title. So let's just call it women at Sonatype. I'm going to add our awesome sticker that I'm literally just dragging and dropping. Um, that's all I did. And here in the preview, you can see it's showing up, right? Um, gonna add a little bit of a description here. And I don't wanna type the whole thing, so I'm just gonna copy paste it here, but you, you get the point. Um, and then I can, I'm gonna start adding members. So you see, I have like two hashtags now, which means this is going to be a subheading. Um, again, if you look over here, this is how far we made it, right? Um, going back here, 
I'm going to copy one of these that I have um, ready. And I don't know how many of you saw it, but we had a call for all members who wanted their information to be here. This is obviously going to be um, regularly maintained, right? So if you're not on here yet, please feel free to reach out um, and we can add you on. So now I have four hashtags, which is literally um, a further you know, breakdown of uh, a sub subheading. And Ali is our first member of Women at Sponotype. Um, we requested them to share GitHub, LinkedIn, topics of interest, um, and where they're located. All of these fields are optional, obviously. So if you don't want to share whatever, you, you're free to select what you want, how far you want to go with that information, right? So if you look at this, I'd, I want to explain, this is the format for how Markdown does uh, URLs. So the square bracket is essentially the word that's going to show. Um, in the link and obviously this in, in the round brackets is actually the, the link. So when you look at it in the preview, it's going to look like this. So if you look at the hyperlink, it's going to Ali's GitHub. Similarly with the LinkedIn, it's going to her LinkedIn, right? Um, and these dashes essentially mean it's a, it's a bulleted list. And again, if you wanted to nest it, you can go further down and um, do something like something like this. And that would make, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. But you're going to, you can make it like, you can make a nested list and um, you can go from there. So let's see what else I can add. I'm going to add, we had 13 submissions so far. So let's see if I can add all of them here. Um, all right, and all of them don't have all the fields because people were comfortable sharing some things and not some things. So, so this is what it looks like. This is what we have, and you can. It's nice because it links. You can you can click on this link, and it's going to take you exactly to that spot. So if you clicked on, that's the point of having titles. That if you click on this, it's going going to take you to Amy, for example. And you can see that in the hyperlink, it goes straight to that person, right? If you want to do that. Um, and so this is this is all our members. And I'm just going to say, this is obviously optional. No, it's not. <laughs> what was that? Commenting changes is, shouldn't be optional. <laughs> it, it it shouldn't be yes, but I'm, geez, um, I'm just I'm just I'm just philosophical <laughs> statement. Yeah, <laughs> no strong feelings a, here. If, if it's a convoluted repo, definitely those commit messages can uh, be all the difference, right, in understanding what went went down there. But I'm just going to commit this now, and this is it. So we have our Vimets type repo. Here's all our members so far. Um, and this is all it took. It was um, literally like, I think less than eight minutes of, of what we did, right? Um, now anyone can go, any of you, if you have, I don't even think you need a GitHub account. You can just go and um, view this because it's a public repo under Sonotype. So yeah. anyone can see this. Do it right away. Um, don't need any yep. any GitHub, but you just need a GitHub account and the ability to click on that little like pencil if you want to go in and yes. access yourself. Absolutely. So this is the URL. If you go to this URL, um, github.com slash sonotype slash women at sonotype, you should be able to view this. Um, and that's all I had. I'm going to stop sharing, Sal, if you want to um, probably demonstrate how we can create a PR and show yeah, that. That's great. OK. OK, so right now I'm sitting on, I have just linked into it. Um, now that I've updated, it's showing me exactly what has just been updated here, right? So if I want to go in and make a little update here, let's see. Um, 
say I want to go in and do a like little centering of something. Let me see. I'm going to cheat and bring up my Markdown cheat sheet, which I need because I'm a Kubernetes developer, not a Markdown developer. Um, but if we want to center something, or let's go ahead and just bold out something, right? Something really, really simple. So all I'm gonna do is sit here. I click into the file. It's important to note that uh, that readme file basically takes you to the front page of that repo. So I click into the file so that it makes it editable for me. Um, and then I go ahead and I click edit. And let's do something as absolutely simple as bolding text, right? So if I want to highlight women at Sonotype, I'm going to do this. Then let's consider this my code chain the contribution that I want to make for today. So I've gone in, I've made a minor edit. I'm going to say update the readme. I am going to have good commit hygiene as it's called. And I'm going to say exactly what I did. I'm going to say I bolded uh, the women at Sonotype, oops, uh, women at Sonotype uh, reference. And maybe I'll go in and fill that in with a hyperlink, right? Um, I don't need to add really any additional information. Typically, I do like engineers to fill that out if they're playing with my executable code because I want to know what they think they did in case it doesn't work. But in this case, let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to propose these changes. And when I propose these changes, it goes through and it tells me what alterations I've made. And then I create a pull request. So as I do this, it's gonna check if it has the ability to merge, which in a markdown file is 100% of the time. <laughs> so that's pretty convenient. Um, but that's really, that's the entire process. You've just seen someone create a GitHub repository as a maintainer, and I just contributed to it in real time. So in a really perfect way to close out this circle, that's genuinely all you need to do. If you want to contribute to this, if you want to add anything in, if you want to make changes to centering things or moving around the documentation, all of you can and all of you should. The really important thing to understand as a contributor is this is a safe space in an absolute sense. And I mean that in terms of version control. There is literally nothing that you can do that cannot be undone. So if you were to literally erase this file, we could go back and get it, right? So it is a wonderful space for you to go and play and learn and understand. That's why open source is so much fun. And that's why people use it to learn in real time. So I'm going to go ahead and to close out this loop, I'll stop sharing my screen. And then if you can go ahead and just merge that request, we'll show what the readme looks like. And then after that, We've gone through an entire open source cycle. So question on that. So Ankita has to merge, so she has to approve the changes that you suggested to that, right? Mm -hmm. So in a software development project where you've got people making suggestions from sometimes all over the world, is there one person that's the singular source of truth that is approving these merges? Yeah, doesn't it make a lot more sense to understand why the supply chain is on fire? Yeah, it's typically one to three people. And a lot of them, to understand really where this issue is coming from, uh, open source is developed in a way where like, this is their intellectual property, this is their project, this is their baby, right? And they've carried it with them. Sometimes they've been supporting it on pay or they're supporting it without pay, right? They're just passionate about making sure that a problem is solved. Nobody starts a repo unless they want to solve a problem, right? Um, yeah, and that's why we saw Log4j happen, right? That was just, you know, they do have thousands of contributors, but do they have maintainers to hold up the other end of that? They don't, right? It's literally individuals trying to do that over their own holidays, right? It's always people on the other side of the PR. Um, but I think it's it, the reason why we have those checks in place is because typically if you're dealing with an executable file, right? Something that runs, um, any single addition to the code raises my probability of it not running, not even that it's malicious, that's just that it doesn't run. And the lines of code, literally the numbers of lines of code that you continue to put into a package, non-linearly, they exponentially increase, one, the time you have to spend maintaining, 
but the chance that there is a bad merge, right? So we do deal with this uh, when we're in like massive enterprise projects by having different branches. So if you hear about Git branches, it's people working on different logical lines, and then you have to have a merge strategy for that. Um, but yeah, GitHub has absolutely changed the way that we do software development for the better. Um, version control makes it so that, you know, you can do something malicious or you can do something stupid. Doesn't matter. You can always have a main branch that always works. And that is a beautiful thing. Awesome. So here I am um, back in my repo. If I refresh this, I'm going to see I have a pull request. And I see what Saul just committed. I'm going to go over here. Um, I will check what was changed. So over here, I can see exactly what changes were made. The, the green side obviously showing, um, you know, what was different. This is this is called a def. Um, and that's going to show you what was changed from the earlier version of code. So I can go here and review it. If I have any comments, I want her to change something, um, anything of that sort, I am going to comment or either request changes. So then that feedback is going to go to that person and they can change that before I approve it. But in this case, it looks good to me. I'm going to approve it. I can leave a comment. And I'm just going to do this you now. Um, submit. And at this point, it's still not merged. I've just gone and reviewed the code. And I'm OK with the changes that were made, right? And the final thing for me is going to be I'm going to hit merge pull request. So now it's merged. If I go back here, this is where we see what was changed. It's merged and it's live. So if you ref refresh your pages, you're going to see that too. Perfect. So we've just walked through the process of setting up a repository, uh, putting some initial code into it, having an external contributor uh, making a pull request. There's one other way to interact with this. Uh, you could create an issue instead if you wanted to have a conversation level, not a code level contribution. Um, and we've shown you exactly how a maintainer is going to go about uh, sort of communicating and making sure that that gets merged. Um, in this case, always working with, so a quick question here. Um, you don't need write access. So the really the beautiful thing here, well, the maintainer has access to be able to do that. The beautiful thing here, right, is that everything is version controlled in a way that most other forms of traditional documentation or collaboration aren't. Um, so feel free to go in. If you have a GitHub account, you can go in and edit it right in the GUI. It's not going to change. You can do it right on the web page. You can and you should, right? Give it a try. Get through the like. It's very much just a stress of trying to do your first contribution. The second you realize it's just a series of buttons to push, it's never intimidating again. And then you will go in and you will go and clean up all of the typos and all of our documentation. I'm not talking about Cenotype specifically, I'm talking about the rest of the open web. That's my one, that's my one thing. I wish we had more people that were going into it and just contributing and understanding they can. So um, with that, I'd love to hear from all of you today. If this was your first time walking through this process, what did you learn? What were your impressions? Um, and do you think that you're gonna go and try to do a contribution? I'm definitely going to get, um, update my contribution. And also, I think every Women at Sonotype meeting should start with a quick look at this page and encourage people to, to join and, and watch this video and then make their own contribution. That'd be awesome. Yes, absolutely. All right. Hey, we promised that we would do this in less than 30 minutes. Uh, we showed you the whole process of walking through this in less than eight, right? This is not that hard and you will be so incredibly empowered after this right just understand that when you go and you like look at a github 
um, it is your, it's not just your right, it's your responsibility. It's really a responsibility to go in and make positive changes, right? It's kind of the same thing as the difference between someone who walks along the street and somebody who walks along the street and picks up a piece of trash and puts it in a trash can, right? If you can think about it that way and understand that you are acting as a digital citizen, then you are living up to what the responsibility is here. And we may have less, uh, less fires to put out in the open source supply chain. All right. Well, I think on that note, honestly, Ankita, you did an incredible job here, a much better job than I did earlier on trying to show this process. Um, I think you really communicated it well. Um, this has really been a pleasure. Um, are there any final thoughts before we jump off? Because I want to make sure that this is a short video people can use moving forward to really understand the process. Final question. If we don't have a GitHub, but now we want one, what should we know about getting set up and linking it to Summitype? All you need is an email. Um, so go to github.com and click, I want to start a new account. That's all you got to do. As soon as you have that, the world is your open source oyster. You can contribute to any open public repository that is out there. And that is what is so cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Any final thoughts? Otherwise, I will call it here. This has been a good 25 minute session, not even 30. Um, it really is that easy. Thank, thank you so you. much, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thanks, Paul. Thanks.